forget. Uh, so our goals for today are just kind of reconnect and collapse and celebrate each other to understand the moment that we are in um, and to magnify the work that we all are doing. Um, because we all are doing some piece of some bigger thing. It might not all be connected, but it's in working in relationship together and think about the next steps we can make together. So that's that's our goals for tonight. And so again, we wanna start off just with introductions. Since we're not that many, do we wanna do this? We were really gonna do this by chat, but it, yeah, I guess we can do it by chat. You know, if you wanna throw in the chat, like your name and your pronouns, in the, the you've already done the land that you're on and then we have this question like what what nourishes you in the last year you know that could be anything to so take a second to throw that in the chat we'd love to see what you're where you're coming in from what's on your mind at the moment yeah lots of great stuff dc brooklyn <laughs> blacksburg monacan land Anna Costin's land, love it. And thanks for sharing that link. Yeah, it's great to have Patty here. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Yeah, Elias is great to connect. Grateful you called in. It's great to hear from you too, Barb. Cool. With that, I was trying to think, is there anything else that I'm missing? I'm good at forgetting things. I think I'm going to hand it over to do some small group discussions. Is that PG? Is that your, your, your spot? That is my cue. And uh, thank you so much for that tranquil handoff. In the past two years, we've seen federal government spend money into existence to take on the COVID crisis, bringing ARPA funds into our communities, and we've seen them also cancel a portion of student debt, upending what many thought about how the economy works. While many of our communities are in constant struggle, we are recognizing that the multiple crises that have taken place in the recent past have led to a new level of consciousness of how these struggles are in solidarity with each other. So what we're going to do next is going to break out rooms and use synthesis to harvest what we have learned during this time. So here are the prompts for you. In brief, how have recent events changed how you think about your life and how we provision for uh, our communities and Second, in the last two years, what needs have arisen in your community and how have you and others responded? The technique that I've suggested here is one called synthesis that we learned from Project South, but you can see in the chat that synthesis involves a, a number of elements. It's not just taking down notes verbatim. Listen for the weight that a uh, that a statement might carry. So if just one person mentions something, but it's a person who was directly affected, try to include that. Listen to the volume that certain ideas have. Is there something that's really overwhelming that really energizes the whole room? That's volume. And listen to the frequency with which things are mentioned. And uh, in that, rather than just taking notes, synthesize that and bring that back to us as a group. So as we get ready to go into breakout rooms, think about these prompts and this technique and who wants to do that for your group. And with that, go ahead off into your breakout rooms. Great, doing it now, you've got 10 minutes, we're taking 10 minutes? Yes, I think so. Great, here we go. That, as we, as we arrive back, I'm going to hand it off to Garrett, who's going to guide us through bringing to the table what we all shared in our groups. Yeah, I, I'll call in group one first. Did you guys, um, did you all designate a uh, synthesizer or anyone who could report back for y'all?
Yeah, I think that's me. <laughs> Is that right, group one? Okay, cool. So what I heard or what we what we sort of came to is the the the, the systems of that we broadly like as a society have grown to rely on capitalism, democracy, they're crumbling. Um, social, political, economic systems. We we are feeling the effects personally, like everyone in our group is feeling it. Um, and this last few years has been clarifying for us and people around us about these crises and about the fact that the systems cannot and don't really have a response for them. And so in that sort of clarifying moment of crisis, there's an opportunity here. We feel like more and more there are people who have self-interest in building the kinds of alternatives that we're envisioning in the solidarity economy and, and to try things that are that are new and maybe have never been tried before, like the modern monetary theory, as an example. Um, but also all of these, all this kind of litany of alternatives that we know about from people who had to live at the fringes and in the margins. And because we've been so much on the defensive in that work, we know that that's not tenable long term. Like we need to be building alternatives for us so that we can do this work long term. And everyone, everyone in my group is also organizing where they are. They're looking for all, for building opportunities and connections with people who are around them in their communities. And so, and a lot of the folks in the group too were not uh, native to where they are. They were had recently relocated. So those were all. How did I do, group? All right, group two, I know we didn't uh, get to form a consensus synthesis, but I wondered um, if anyone might take a um, impromptu stab at it, uh, if there was a common theme that emerged or reflection. I could try. I think for our group, one of the common themes was that family planning is not necessarily supported by the government. And that could include a woman's right to like abortion, but also a, a family's right to decide if they want to have both parents in the workforce and not have to worry too much about the cost of childcare and things of that nature. So I, I that is an amazing point of synthesis that did not occur to me, but does now. Does anyone else have um, any reflections or anything that stuck out to them before we move on to the next agenda item? Lindsay, you want to do a tip check? Yeah, I think for this next piece, we were going to offer a moment of kind of personal and, and quiet reflection to check out some beautiful solutions. And so we're going to uh, drop a link in the chat of beautiful solutions. This is something that I learned about during the Highlander Economics and Governance training, and it's stories and theories and solutions through the lens of a solidarity economy and we know that beautiful solutions are everywhere so I'm going to put this link and since everyone's on the computer I think I think I'll drop the link and thank you Matthew and then you can explore it yourselves I think we're going to take like seven minutes here. And this is for you to like explore the site, but also to take a break, step away from the computer if you want to um, grab a drink, whatever you need to do, feel free to turn off your camera, um, surf around the beautiful solution site. And when we come back, we'll ask, um, what did you see? And um, what are some beautiful solutions in your own communities? So, Again, this is an opportunity both for a break from the screen and some time to surf around the beautiful solutions. All right, I think it's been about seven minutes or so. Um, our folks back with us, did you get a bit of a breather in? A break? Yeah, welcome back everyone. So I hope you got to explore the beautiful solutions 
page a little bit um, and these big ideas, you know, that we really need to build new institutional power and, um, you know, one step at a time. I'm wondering, like, what, what did, what did you see? What, what did this bring up for you when you were exploring these theories and, and stories and solutions? I can go. I got kind of engrossed in reading the, the theory that was Thought about Ed Whitfield here, community as a developer. And um, I just started thinking about how sad it is that we've turned over kind of like the structure, the the built like of our built environment of our cities and towns to to corporate developers who uh, especially you know in small Appalachian towns like Mon, we used to usually have this core downtown and then we have like the other side of the road tracks. And it's always an ugly corporate development. It's full of businesses like fast food restaurants and big box stores that displace, displace workers. And there's just something really sad about it to me. Not only the fact that it's not just and it doesn't promote a just economy, but it's making the world less beautiful. And yeah, I, I was thinking on that. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah, Garrett, that uh, resonates with me. The perspective that you're that you're bringing to that—it's a vast catalog of practices that, that that have been put together. It's really commendable, and it's something that's happened over a long period of time. With the rapid changes we've been through, it kind of puts some things in perspective, and I think that something that has endured. Is exactly what you put your finger on for me. And that is as the macro environment changes in response to a pandemic, disrupting the very life process at a global level and its economic analogs, uh, we're pressed, pressed to change exactly at this level. And that's been the real challenge. And I think what comes through in all of these impulses towards solution is a, a striving for life at that at that level, and and impediments as you pointed out to, to it. So I, I'm hopeful. Kind of the theme that's been coming up here of a renewed clarity coming into the hands of that urge toward life toward community. Absolutely. Um, does anybody else want to share either what you saw on the um, Beautiful Solutions site or, or about what Beautiful Solutions are around you in your community? Yeah, Elias. I'll share one that I'm thinking about that is a little bit new to me, and I don't know if it made the list here. This is a wonderful website. I hadn't looked at it in a while, but it's just loaded pretty good stuff and I thank you for reminding me about it. I want to go back through it. Although I do wonder if they might be aware of an approach to neighborhood regeneration that I learned about a few weeks ago at a conference called Neighborhood Economics. And it has a site, neighborhoodeconomics.org. And it was about a variety of different things, including downtown Crenshaw, which is a pretty sizable project. But another interesting twist in this conference was the focus on church assets. And the reason this is a topic is because as many of you will be aware, uh, church attendance and participation has been in a steady decline across the denominations for 20 years or so, maybe a bit more. And so one of the side effects of that is that particularly the mainline denominations find themselves operating older buildings in which very few people are showing up and not very often. 
And so they're trying to figure out what do we do with this asset? And then there's also another kind of asset, which is the financial holdings of these various denominations. And it is very surprising the amount of reflection that they're going through as they try to figure out what to do with this property. For example, should they just sell it to the developers? Often that's the kind of de default position. But there's a kind of a, a wave of interest in community people coming to these churches and saying, what you should do is find ways to repurpose the facility. And, and here's the important solidarity piece, you should do it with people in your immediate neighborhood. And you should bring them in and the renovation and other work that needs to be done needs to be done in community with the people who run the church and are on the board or whatever, the elders. And so there's some amazing work that started up around this. And um, it, there's, it's part of another conversation about what churches should do with their assets generally. And it's encouraging that some of them, not as many as we need, but some of them at least are beginning to think about this and realizing that in this crisis, they can either liquidate or they can try to remember their mission. Mm -hmm. And their mission was to be planted in a particular place and serve a particular group of people. And so this crisis, this sort of demographic crisis or theological crisis, <laughs> whatever it is, is leading them to think in new ways, which is a big opening. That's a lot of property. That's a lot of people. You know, uh, but it's not an area that we might normally have thought of as uh, a big opening to the solidarity economy. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I've, I've heard, I hear some or see some through lines with like the land back movement as well, where I think there, that there's that emphasis on, on looking towards faith institutions because of the amount of, of land. Uh, that they own. Um, yeah, social infrastructures to support community and by way of certified kitchens, land for gardens, fellowship halls. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and then I see Garrett, you shared a link in here too. Mount Zion Baptist Church Preservation Society. Right. So the part two to, to this question as well was like, what beautiful solutions do you see around you? Y'all have shared a couple in the chat here. And I want to introduce you, if you're not familiar yet, with our Virginia Solidarity Economy map and this mapping project that we have come together around and that is really an ongoing project um, where we want to map the beautiful solutions and solidarity economy practitioners across Virginia. We, you know, we started this a couple of years ago and it, it's been just, it's like a place to visually see what's going on. But I think more than that, this has been one of our gateways to building connections across the, the network. And if we can see where each other, where each other are, and we know where each other are, then we know who we can connect with and who, um, who we can find kinship with. So this is on um, the Virginia Solidarity.org website, and we want to invite you all to check it out. When you follow the, the link, you'll be able to see it, and then you can also add to it or um, share it with organizations that, that you think should be on here. For example, in, in Roanoke, I was there earlier today, and there's a new Pay What You Can cafe that opened up. And so I really want to go back and check it out um, and see what they're about and then invite them to, to join the map as well. Oh, and thank you, PG. I want to lift up what you put here in the chat as well. Um, Harrisonburg has effectively stopped enforcing exclusionary aesthetic nuisance violations 
even as adjacent Broadway tries to take a person to court over a messy yard. Yeah, I know this is something you're really passionate about. Do you want to expand or, or say any more out loud? Sure. Uh, these aesthetic violations were part and parcel of it with exclusionary zoning that was put in place at the beginning of the 20th century. And they were all conceived of as ways to, to separate people. And they indeed had a tremendous impact on the racial wealth gap that went along with redlining all the consequences of that. So something that seems like it's potentially trivial is it's actually not. It's uh, how we think about our fellow human beings. And in Harrisonburg, it's been a 10 year long adjustment since our renaming of a street for Dr. Martin Luther King to say that we're not that kind of community that, uh, that, that does that to people. And the consequence has been uh, very positive for us. Our incarceration rate, a generalized measure of community health has been way down, surprisingly down when I looked at the numbers again. And as you walk across this most biodiverse part of the country here in Virginia, in this part of Virginia, you see it reflected in our in our yards and in our neighborhoods. How we treat each other. Thanks for sharing that. And I, I want to figure out if there are ways to add things like that to the map. Um, you know, that not I don't think the map has to only be for for organizations, but if there are initiatives or or wins like that, if we can add them as well, I think that's really inspiring. Um, and I, I forgot to mention too that there's a historic layer to the map. Um, you know, because we recognize that um, in order to imagine a future, we have to know where we've been. Um, and so through the historic layer, we're documenting um, especially black and indigenous efforts that have sought to build alternatives um, that realize the values we wanna share. So this, uh, like I mentioned, is, is one project of the Virginia Solidarity Economy Network. We're a group of people and organizations that have been coming together for the past couple of years. And we, you know, we want to be a place where we can contribute to, learn from, and um, build locally controlled projects uh, while also connecting with, with broader networks as well. One of the ways that we're doing this um, this fall is through a series of learnings. Matthew mentioned this earlier. It's called Feel to Real. Here is our Feel to Real. Save the dates for these. These are going to be hopefully really engaging conversations around. Um, each one is going to have a theme. So you can see October 20th is going to be exploring Virginia's new economy. We're going to learn about and hopefully model a people's assembly in November. Um, and then in December is going to be a conversation about the care economy. And so it's an opportunity to like come and make, make connections and, and build relationships here. And we're thinking of it too, you know, as a way to, to really just start the conversation, to seed the conversation that we can then grow afterwards. I think that's all that I have to share. We'll follow up with you all with, with these ways to stay connected with the Virginia Solidarity Economy Network. And I think I'm gonna pass it to you, Garrett, to help close us out. Yeah, so we're gonna close with the poem, a reflective poem from Alandria Williams. I'm happy that we're closing with this because um, Alandria is a um, kind of fixture in um, my movement lineage as someone who has um, uh, built infrastructure for young people in Appalachia like myself to organize um, and root themselves in their communities. Um, and so I'll leave it with that. Hi, my name is Landry Williams, a longtime member of Tennessee Valley Union Church, and I'm happy to share a poem with you I wrote called, We Are Worthy. We are worthy, not because of what we produce, but because of who we are. We are divine bodies of light and darkness. You are not worthy because of what you offer, not because of what 
is in your mind, not for the support you give others, nor what you give at all. We are worthy and whole just because. And this great turning and this great pandemic and this radical readjustment and realignment. We are not disposable, we are needed. We are the very people that have withstood everything that has been thrown at us. And as Maya Angelou would say, still I rise. We arise from the pain. We rise from the grief. We rise from the limits people put on us and the limits we place on ourselves. We rise to be the children and the ancestors. We rise to be our true selves our true selves in relationship to our families and communities, recognizing our liberating and whole selves, honoring them and others as we strive for abundant communities, abundant lives, abundant relationships, and abundant values and cultural manifestations. You are worthiness personified. I, you, and we are worthy and desire a life where we are not fighting for our very existence. Imagine what we create if we were not always in the struggle. Imagine what we could envision if we were just allowed and just let be to go there. So tired of always having to resist, to fight, demanding, and pushing. To everyone that has the courage, the power, the ability to co-create what we want and need while rooting in what we cannot lose and who we are. You are the visionary. You are the hope. You are our ancestors' dreams. No, you might not ever end up on a list somewhere, but you are on a list in someone's heart and mind. And it's how you move in the world so people can see by example you are the embodiment of what we need. The embodiment not of productivity, but the embodiment of radical love, care, and sanctuary. It's time, embodiment time. Embodiment. Living one's values out loud. Let me every day live my values out loud. Let us every day live our values out loud. Embodying our values, not the productivity quotient, beyond productivity, past productivity, true embodiment, life. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Grateful for everybody. Good to see you all. Brooklyn, <laughs> Blacksburg, Monica and Lane.